Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. I have something that I am very excited about today, cautiously excited. Uh, this is free in the top right of Blitz Y. Uh, you know, free, I cast him a fair amount, one of the old six dragons. I actually really appreciate his play style nowadays. I think he's playing some really good StarCraft. Uh, he doesn't make it into ASL every season, but he's like one of those guys right on the brink of making it every season, if that makes sense. like. He, he makes it semi-regularly, uh, but very, very good play recently. I think he's in good shape. Uh, his opponent, though, this is who I'm actually excited by. This is 4GG, okay? I don't know if you remember 4GG, but I think you probably do, okay? This guy uh, just had to retire from StarCraft II, okay? So if you don't know, basically... He was a Twitch streamer for StarCraft II for a very, very long time. Uh, Twitch has a, a vibrant, thriving StarCraft II streaming scene. A lot of people play and a lot of people watch StarCraft II on Twitch. Whereas Afrika TV has no one watching StarCraft II. Everyone watches StarCraft One. Now, Twitch was recently banned in Korea. Now, that's a whole nother can of worms that I'm not going to get into right here but Twitch is banned in Korea. You basically, as a Korean, you cannot uh, have a Twitch account. You're not allowed to get subs. You're not allowed to have people give you bits or anything. You can't, you can't, you can't do anything about it, okay? Uh, so he retired from StarCraft II streaming. Now he won a bunch of StarCraft II events in his time and everything. And suddenly he's back in StarCraft I, okay? Now I need to mention, for those of you who don't know, 4GG is an MSL champion. The guy is legit good at StarCraft 1. He just hasn't played in a long time. Now, obviously, we don't know what he does in his free time or anything, but he's been a full-time StarCraft 2 player for a really, really long time. Now, his style in StarCraft 1 in the old days, very technical, kind of like a cross between Leda and Sock. Okay, those are two players you get to see a lot here on Artosis Cast, right? Sock is a very technical player, and then... Uh, Leda is a technical player that's a bit more fancy. That's kind of the range that 4GG was always in back in the day. But yeah, he has an MSL victory. He actually won over his own teammate Jadong back then. It was it was a very surprising victory uh, when he won it. And he didn't, he didn't have as much success ever again. But I mean, that's legit. If you win a Star League, you're kind of a legend forever. So that's enough intro. Uh, I'm excited. I want to see what sort of shape that 4GG is in here because who knows like a player of this caliber if he gets back in shape he might just become an ASL regular and that that that's exciting I love seeing players return uh to whatever <laughs> whatever game they want to play at the time even though I think he did want to continue playing Starcraft 2 and maybe that was not that was not feasible for him as has a, a job anymore losing his twitch okay okay I'll shut up about it now uh, let's look at these builds. It's a Nexus first, just a blind Nexus first here for free. And for 4GG, he was going for a factory expand, and so he'll just continue onwards with the factory expand. I've talked countless times about how I think you should always offensive gas on these maps. But you know what? There's worse things in the world than going Nexus first and getting away with it, right? <laughs> uh, definitely not, not bad in this particular case. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, a Fulcher comes out, so he'll be able to kill this probe, and the Zealots can't do very much here. They might actually continue to push forward just to keep him back. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try to force him to micro in here. It's not actually that hard. It's a little bit. It's a little bit tricky. You'll see. See, so he's trying to catch him. See where he stood? He was trying to catch him as he turned around to go around this corner. It's like a little bit harder to micro in there because the Vulture does have to turn to, to do its kiting. Anyways, a Dragoon comes out, and he's going to kill, like, one. You can see very, very good micro here. And and ends up killing one. He's going to have a bunker. He only has one Marine, and he's making a tank. Okay, like, I don't like the position for 4GG right now. Yeah, this, like, this looks, I'm just, I'm... I'm looking at it and okay, so it's a Nexus first he's against. His first vulture didn't really do anything. He's not getting mines or anything. Uh Free has just run up with two dragoons. He's not getting range yet. He's getting uh, you know, the robotics, so that's that's fine. He might go into observer, he might go into reaver from here. 
and not a lot going on. So it's like Academy second fact. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, the Academy will be fast enough just based off the fact that this is a Nexus first, like your opponent can't get DTs that quickly. So you're going to be pretty safe going Academy. That's fine. The second factory, like he might, no, I was going to say you might do a three tank push because those were popular. They're not, they're not super popular right now. You can still use them, but generally Protoss holds them pretty easily. That's why the one tank push is really popular at the moment. Uh, but I think he's just making seed shakes for sta stability. The reason I know he's not going to do a three tank push is because he didn't make extra Marines. He only has one Marine in the bunker. Uh, and like you need at least three or four Marines with a three tank push to tank damage or the goons will literally just kill the tanks. Okay, so yeah, a fourth tank getting started. He's probably gearing up for a five factory here. And on this map, like 100%, you got to do that. Like this, this is the number one five factory map. Even if your opponent is kind of countering it, you generally do it anyways, because you're pushing through this very thin area. Okay, so a shuttle uh, is out. Going to load that up while he waits for the Reavers. <coughs> Probe going around. We see a couple pylons, right? Pylon here, pylon here. Just some well-placed buildings here from free. And he starts his Stargate. This is the scary build right now. All the pros are doing this. A lot of lesser players on the ladder are doing that as well. Lesser. Uh, <laughs> uh, where you go just like Reaver into carriers and you know it's like nexus first into reaver and a carrier is incredibly incredibly hard to beat um so just in general this is going to be strong now four goliaths are out he's about to have siege mode the goliath standing at the front siege mode just now finishes needs a siege one here for sure you definitely want to siege at least one okay siege is all three that's fine okay gonna try to break the bunker the bunker is not a big part of this defense uh, like, you don't really care. Not the best beginning of the engage. Like, loses... Okay, so he loses uh, both Zealots and a Dragoon to kill the Bunker and one Marine. And again, it was only there to just, like, be in the way. But yeah, this setup you don't really want to attack into. More factories going to be added. You know, he does have scanners, and his barracks float, flew up here, so uh, he knows what the tech is. So you're going to have to hit during this transition, right? He sees the two Stargates, he sees the Fleet Beacon. It doesn't cost nothing to do this. This is the only real transition that Protoss goes through uh, in this matchup is when they go into carry. Wow, some good scarab hits. Nine kills. Damn. I was like not paying attention to that because I did not expect it, but finds a nice angle there where he wasn't taking too much damage and got some real damage in there. Got to be happy with that. Oh, nice pickup as well. Uh, so anyways, this... That's a lot. That's 700 minerals, 500 gas, and then you got to assume this is 100, 100 on the plus four interceptors, and you got to assume 100, 100 on plus one, right? So that's a ton of money he's put in. So you're going to have to have an attack come out here. Six factory, this is exactly right. Like, I, and he's on 43 SCVs. He would be a little bit higher, which would be a little bit better if those scarab hits hadn't hit, but you know, you take it as you get it. Uh, plus one is almost done. His speed and Goliath range are both almost done. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, he's got to push soon, right? You can wait for two. You don't want four to really get out, but it could occur. But yeah, like there is a push timing that's coming up here for 4GG, and he needs to nail it. And I feel like he's he's getting into the spot to do that. So moving, uh, free moves his dragoons in another position. Looks like the vulture's running by. He may just want to lay mines in certain areas. Like, if he lays mines here, that might turn into a win very, very quickly. Uh, runs him up this way. Maybe he's going to scout for another base. Yeah, he scouts up here. Doesn't see anything. Doesn't see anything here. So no more base yet. Looks like free might actually kind of sneak, expand over the side. A lot of Protoss have been doing this. I don't understand it. Uh, but yeah, throws the vultures over here. He actually doesn't have his mines upgrade yet. But probably laying mines uh, behind the retreat is going to be smart. Okay, he made a lot of Goliaths here. Those are some very good Scarab hits. Dude, really excellent. He kills up, He kills like two tanks and like four Goliaths or something so far. So really, really, really efficient. Oh, man, just a good battle coming out here from Free. He trades really well. Normally, I'm uh, very on top of calling out Protoss that, that lose their Reavers on this side of the map. But when you're trading for that much, it's amazing. He killed a lot there. 
Now he is going to end up losing some of these dragoons. Porgy gets in with his vultures. Really, really nice stuff. Getting a lot of damage. He's moving across. Hopefully he has a lot of Goliaths coming. He actually, he has a fair amount with range right now against the two, uh, two carriers making interceptors. He's killing a ton of probes. Is 4GG going to be able to beat free? That's like a pretty impressive victory if he does, especially against like a Nexus first into, into carrier. You know, I was questioning his build order when he was going pure tank into academy, but I see why he's able to pull this off pretty well, even though he kind of like... Uh, it was messy how he, he how he attacked out into the reavers and the uh, goons that were on top of his ramp, but he was able to get like he was able to have a very healthy siege tank out while still scouting exactly what was going on. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And that's that's impressive, right? Like that's the kind of thing where, oh wow, against certain types of builds, you're going to be in good shape because of that. Whereas maybe versus a more greedy build, like a very fast third, that won't be as strong. But against some of these more technical builds that your opponents are doing on Blitz, uh, on Blitz Y, it actually makes a lot of sense. So uh, kudos to 4GG for the, the build, the opener. But that being said, he, his army is not super fantastic. He's got a good amount of Goliaths, but does he have enough tanks to hold everything else off? Well, I think he might. He might. There's like a Reaver and four goons. He's walking them back. <clears throat> needs needs support for the carriers. The carriers alone cannot build this. That's for sure. Moves forward there. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to try to push back these carriers a little bit. <clears throat> and... I... I... I think, especially if he has a couple tanks coming up. Let's check. Okay, he's not really making any more tanks. So it's like basically the three tanks he has. <coughs> Excuse me. If you kill all three of these tanks with the uh, carriers, you might actually still win this as free. See, that's one tank now. So it's like Goliath turret with one siege tank. Just a few more gateway units and you actually might be able to push into here. The tank is going to have to target Reavers because the Reavers are going to get insane hits on these Goliaths. Yeah, a few zealots in the front to kind of uh, tank the tank hits. <laughs> Our little scan goes down, put some damage out. <clears throat> More Goliaths coming in. He does have this base up and running. And by the way, you might be looking at this like really surprised and impressed. I I think that 4GG has been has played some. Obviously, this is not his first game back. He might have been practicing Brood War for a while, knowing about Twitch, you know, going out of business in Korea. Um, also, if I'm remembering correctly, I think he actually made it into an ASL season. So I think he's jumped around. Uh, not an ASL season, I'm sorry. Uh, a KSL season years ago. So I think he has jumped around a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to remember it. I feel like I remember him getting in and having a really sick game on Medusa, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, have, I have a memory that looks like it's that. But uh, yeah, it's still very impressive play because I know he's been playing a lot of StarCraft 2 for the last few years at least. Still, uh, the carriers come up. He did make some more siege tanks very importantly because again, if you lose all the siege tanks, the Reavers can just literally attack, move in. And it's going to be gross. Taking a bit more damage there is free. This base, he just has no idea. He could easily kill this base. Well, it'll take a minute to get through the, the pylon, but you send just a couple units over there and you are going to get it. More turrets being made. Picks off that SCV. Doesn't want to deal with more missile turrets coming up. And he hasn't been able to inch forward. I think that that's a big issue. If you were, if you had a tank here or so, or here, you'd be hitting one patch and that would cut down the mineral mining immensely. You'd like only be able to mine with like five probes on here at that point, if you got even that close. Okay, starting to move forward a little bit. Siege is up all the way. Target this Reaver. Perfect. Perfect. Now he's hitting that patch. See? Notice how he's pull away. You can only leave like a very few probes at the very top mineral patches. And Free has to go back up his ramp. Now, all that being said, this is eight carriers. Killing eight carriers on this map is no... Is, it's not fun. It's very, very difficult. These carriers are going to cause a huge problem. Now, he has a large amount of Goliaths. He's going to walk down. They're going to be 1-1 one, one here shortly very large supply of those Goliaths. So I think at this point, you're just trying to push them back and kill uh, 
<clears throat> interceptors and just hold him down. But he doesn't know about this base. This base is... I feel like that base is very likely to win free this game. You would you would look at this and say, oh, I think 4GG's got it. But actually, this many carriers are not really killable on Blitz. <clears throat> There's just so many places you can fly. In fact, okay, that's not a shuttle, but... He might make a shuttle relatively soon to try to expand down here. Because the carriers just guard that forever. Goes after the... Oh, man. He goes after the armory. Hopefully, you queue up a bunch of Goliaths here. So, he clears up almost two in each and starts the armory again immediately. So, he's going to be okay. Still going to be able to make those uh, those Goliaths. Armory is the same build time as two of them. So, as long as you have two queued up while you start the next one, it's not too bad. Just flying through, killing so much stuff. <coughs> Excuse me once again. Sorry. I don't know why I have a little cough today. Something's stuck in my throat. But uh, look, it, the the Goliaths are trying to chase the carriers around, but the carrier count continues to grow. He really doesn't need to build anything else. You just make sure you have a few observers in case wraiths come in, and that's about it. And the thing is, he just flew through the whole main base, so he knows that there's like one starport. There's no way wraiths are going to get him. He doesn't have to worry about that. He can send his observers out to scout to figure out where everything is. Look at this. Comes up here. He's picking off sea shanks. You know, it was a pretty well-played game here from 4GG, but I think he's very close to dead. The, uh, the uh, gateway army's not that high, and 4GG still thinks that he's... He might actually be like, I think I'm going to win still. Still hasn't scouted 9 o'clock at all. Mm. Uh, that's that's really everything this game is, that, that 9 o'clock base. Without 9 o'clock, this game would be 4 GG's, and he just has a scout, and he could have killed it as well. It's a little bit risky, but uh, paying off here for free. We're just going to rotate down again with the carriers. You know, hit this third base, then go into the main. But if there's anything waiting there, you just kind of fly back. You can harass this gas more. You know, preventing gas from your opponent when he has to build Mass Goliath is pretty rough. Going to go ahead, kill this command center off. There's no other uh, third base on the map right now. Hasn't really started anything else as well. Ooh, very clogged up entrance right there, unfortunately. <clears throat> Still, it feels like 4GG is trying to get to a critical mass where he might be able to either kill enough interceptors that he can counterattack or... Yeah, that's probably about the only thing I can think of at this point that he could be looking for. Starport goes down. <laughs> so even less uh, chance of anything, any comeback with like cloaked rates or anything. Still pretty much out of minerals. Oh, he did finally find this base. Okay, so now 4GG with a little bit of counterplay, right? This, there is a world in which this could turn into like a, a base trade because he's killing the this third base location. He's lost his own third, sure. But if you bring enough Goliaths together, you might be able to counterattack and kill this. So basically, if you kill this, you bring every Goliath together and kill this, we have a Protoss player that's out of money. But obviously his carriers could kill all this. You can float buildings, you can run SCVs, whatever. And then it just comes down to, can you kill the gateway army and the interceptors? You don't have to worry about the carriers at that point. You look at this money that Free has, it's very, very small. But he's got to bring every unit he has. His SCVs should be fighting here as well. Yeah, he pulls his SCVs to fight. The Zealot's coming down, trying to attack on top of these Goliaths. Oh, man. The, you know, the SCVs are doing a pretty good job there, and a flank of Goliaths comes in as well. Like, 4GG has to go across the map right now, I think, to have any real chance to win. Ooh, he might get a pick. <gasps> one. Does he get the other one? There's a very low health one. I think he doesn't know which one it is. You, know, you have to click on those to see the health. You can see one is super, super low at the moment. All right, kills off the Reaver. The Gateway Army is gone, okay? There's no ground units. All of his money right now is going towards Interceptors. In fact, he should probably cancel this to just get more Interceptor money. So it's all down to, can he kill the Interceptors? Look at that. 25 minerals per Interceptor, by the way, right? So it's 11 carriers. It is very scary. Let's take a look. Eight. That one's building. That one's building. Ten, eight. Zero on that one, right? There's not, this is not as much damage as it looks like. This is not, you know, there's still chances here for 4 GG. He's walking forward. He's killing a lot. Okay, a Zealot comes out. A Zealot's going to take more damage than an Interceptor. So that actually makes sense. 
More damage than four interceptors that it costs. Yeah, I guess at this point, Zealots are a very good build. <laughs> it's, it is tanking some damage here. The interceptor count, getting low on some of these. Dude, he is like out of money for real. He is mining a little bit. That's not that many interceptors left on those mineral patches when you look at it. Oh my God. He really should cancel this. Dude, that is, uh, that's, that's 10 interceptors, 10 interceptors. <laughs> I can't believe I'm counting money in interceptors. This patch is only two interceptors. This one's only four interceptors. This one's only two interceptors. All right, the probe's coming out to fight as well. We are literally down to the last minerals here. There should be a few more Goliaths walking up. He is long distance mining with a million SCVs. Oh my God. This is so crazy. Look at this. He brings this carrier forward. Like you can actually sack carriers at this point. It doesn't matter. Like you're, it's just about killing those interceptors because you don't have the money to replace. This is absolutely crazy. The probes are actually adding so much more to this fight than I thought they would. This is one of the most insane endings. How many interceptors are actually left? GG is called two, one. Okay, three, six, eight. Okay, he had like a fair amount left there at the end. GG, crazy game. Glad to see 4GG back. Hope he stays. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed.